1600 saints. So on Twitter, I uh, made a, ooh, my skin father. Cause I, I just got out of the shower, put all my serums and things. Um, I made a tweet and I said that uh, if a man has not proposed to you after five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, just move along, sis. That That's what I said. Um, and then I put a little caveat next to it, which was, I really mean maybe after two years. I'm just trying to add, you know, a little bit of space and freedom uh, because people on Twitter uh, get mad over everything. And so I, told, I came out the bathroom. I said, Preston, you want to get on live and talk about this? <laughs> maybe seven minutes ago. And he said, I don't, I don't think I know what to say. But this is a thing. This is a I thing. I didn't think I know what to say. I said I might not have a lot to say about this. My bad for misinterpreting your language. Yeah. Uh, it's a thing that women be in these like super long, 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 long relationships. And I feel a way about that. And I feel a way because I have seen enough evidence to know that men can be very decisive if they want to be. They, they will pick and choose and make a decision and drop on that one knee with that ring when they want to. And so to me, I don't know, there's something there. <laughs> so why men be doing that? Why men be doing what? Why, like, will be with a woman for a really, really long period of time without getting engaged. What is that? Because some women allow that. <laughs> I feel like I feel like if a woman allowed it, a man ain't gonna. So it's her, it's her fault that he doesn't want to make a decision. No, it's I think it's um, I think it's both party fault. But I, I I do think that a man can only do what a woman allowed him to do. And so if you leave him, he you you can't be proposed to him for ten years. Cause I I just kind of feel like if y'all not in a relationship to working towards marriage, like what's the purpose of? The relationship, and, not, and it, but so, I also so have what questions. is so is what is Christians? Yeah, we talking about Christians. Okay, well, yeah, because it's the Christian men that be the the, the hot mess. I don't care what nobody say. You in a relationship ten years, you smashing. I don't care if you in a church, you smashing. For for the little eighteen hundred people on here, smashing means having sex. That, that I must. I am gonna say. I am gonna say when people are together for a really, really, really long time. I I be judging. I'd be like, I, I think y'all defiling something, <laughs> cause I all I know is, <laughs> and, and if y'all smashing, I mean, look, I, I I say don't do that, but I'm not necessarily trying to judge. I'm just saying, like, I be, be acting, judging. All I'm saying is, don't, I'm like, I don't know how. Don't they, be acting how, like we don't know. How y'all restraining y'all? Don't be acting like. Long. Don't be acting like we don't know, cause we know. Hello. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, 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 I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm not, I'm not acting holy as thou, but I'm just saying we know. Okay, so let's get to the heart, though. Let let's let's get our Ayanla on. Why <laughs> Ayanla? When a man is with a woman, okay, for a considerable amount of time, what? It's obviously some le me measure of fear and comfortability, right? What? But what is that? Because we can't blame her. Totally. It, it's some inside of him that's afraid to make a decision when it, in regards to her. Well, I'll, I'll that, say that's what I need to know. I'll say this. I think last year on the well, what was it? I, I made a I made a post a, a, a while back, and I, I said the post. Let me let me scoot up so they can see you. The post. Uh, I forget exactly how the post went, but it went something along the lines of uh, women of God instead of trying to figure out men in general try to figure out the man God is the man is God has called for you. And so what I was and then I and then I also said in, in the post, um, men are much more nuanced than society paints us to be. And so the the purpose of that post, I think a lot of times people ask questions like, why do men do this? And the truth is we men we're way more complicated than society gives us credit. And so every man is not doing the same thing for the same reasons. It's different reasons. And so I think some men... Oh, so you're saying I'm generalizing, y'all? Uh, yeah, you said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. I didn't say it. I mean, y'all uh, generalize yourselves, too. Uh, but I will say, I will say some men feel, feel 
comfortable, too comfortable. Um, I also think that, yeah, I also think that some men feel the pressure in the church to get saved. Uh, not to get saved, I'm sorry, to get married. When they first get saved, it's kind of like, it's kind of like marriage is almost like the um, the the banner of your maturity <laughs> instead of like truly growing in Christ and becoming a disciple. And so I think some men feel the pressure of the, like feel the unhealthy pressure to get say um, to get married um, in the church. And I think that sometimes we could do a better job of developing who they are so they can feel comfortable to be husbands. And I don't think we do that. Got it. But like. Like I said, if if the boy is with a girl for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, ten years though, I, ten is intense. So, uh, yeah. but I've seen it. So ten years, I I I, I would say that um, there's something wrong with there. Not not just <laughs> with him, but his local community. Like I I, I couldn't. I would question the community of 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 the person who's in a relationship for ten years in a church, and like, like why why are you guys even allowing these per- these people to stay in a relationship this long <laughs> without pursuing <laughs> you know marriage? Like one, and then two, I just think that some men might just be like fearful. You know what I'm saying? Straight. What are they afraid of? I think some men are afraid of commitment. I think why. Some- why? Well, I'm trying to dig. You you giving me generalizations. You giving me surface level answers. I'm trying. I'm trying to get underneath, like Ayanna Van Zandt. I'm trying. I, I'm I, trying know, to- I know. For me, I can only speak for my myself and uh, a lot of the the guys that I I knew, because um, I think it's different from. I know a lot of you know unsaved dudes who's been in relationships, and of course they don't have any you know. But I know for me, when I first got saved, when I first got, I I was thinking about proposing to you, Mm -hmm. I was nervous. I've never seen healthy marriages. I've never seen, Mm. um, you know, a husband like really love his wife until I met, you know, my disciple and my pastor, Brian Mm Dye. And so I was like, man, I might suck at this. So your fear wasn't even fear of being hurt per se, but fear that you would fail as a husband. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but then for some dudes, I, I don't, it, it might not be that. It might be, you know, um, yeah, fear, like you said, of being hurt, of being rejected. Like a lot of times I think women are the ones who who a lot of people recognize as like being vulnerable and being fearful of being hurt and rejected. And a lot of times men don't communicate that. Mm-hmm. But I think that men have those same... Um, fears as well it's Mm -hmm. just not easily communicated Mm. in a lot of men and so yeah like we also talked about i forget when we talked about it we had a conversation about um men and mommy hurt yeah like you want to go there we were supposed to make this a podcast episode yeah, but we, we yeah we were supposed to make this a podcast like mommy hurt is a or mommy damage is a real issue yeah uh like because if you look at it like the our mothers and our fathers are the first examples of what womanhood and what manhood is to us. Mm-hmm. And so for women, like a lot of times their fathers teach them about men, you know what I'm saying? Like unknowingly, like even if he wasn't there, like, right. Your father wasn't there. And you talk right. about how your father, daddy had- wasn't there. You know take me to the fair. He said he didn't care. Okay. Uh, <laughs> daddy was <laughs> That time it was great. Yeah, and I, so I, so I think uh, I think some 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 men have had controlling mothers, mm. um, and so every man I know personally that has had that that has had controlling mothers, they think every woman is trying to control them. Interesting. <laughs> like it's it's so then a woman creating boundaries and saying hey you're not gonna like you know drag me along on you know this whole uncommitment train they see that as them controlling them instead of them actually communicating their needs and what they want possibly yeah okay or just yeah or just yeah like i I think some some men feel like they they want to be ready you want to give it to my mom yeah all right quick in the meantime, while we drop uh, Sage off down the hall, 
<laughs> I, I I think um I don't know. I think this is interesting to me just because for me and Preston in particular, uh we were friends for three years. Those of y'all that know our stories know this. And then we both started to on our separate ends of the world, uh, get a sense that we that God wanted us to be with each other. And um, I think we were in an active dating relationship, maybe six months. But the thing was, the entire six months, I think for some people, they're dating to fix. Wow. <laughs> they're dating to figure things out. Because <laughs> that, that is a part of the courtship dating process is, are you the one for me? For us, we knew from jump. <laughs> we kind of knew immediately God wants us together. So it was never it was never a conversation about, you know, if, but when. Yeah. Um, so but you can go back to the mommy hurt stuff. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm watching the game. Right. It's a good game. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I, I think some dudes have like, you know, I, yeah, mommy hurt or or mommy like Fear, so I, cause I, cause for me, Ooh, my arm not long enough to to include you. Go ahead, I need a selfie stick. For for me, like we often talk about how like I married my mom in a lot of ways, and so like I had a strong, confident, you know, mom who instilled a lot of confidence in me, and so like that's what I was attracted to when I, you know, when I realized that you were my wife, and and so I think a lot of a lot of times I, you know, a, a man they just. They just be cool on women in ways that I feel like they can't verbalize because of the experiences that they had with their mothers. So you would, so, <laughs> like, would so, so would you say that there are they like women? Are, I'm not, when I say cool, I mean they like women, but they just kind of cool on committing themselves to a woman because of what they've experienced with their mothers. So you would say that there are some underlying fears and underlying traumas that they themselves can't even identify. Absolutely. I learned that in I learned that in therapy. That's why cats need to start going to therapy cuz this stuff is deep. I think we would be naive to think that that women have fears about entering relationships based on the, the relationships they had with their fathers. Mm -hmm. And men don't have the same reservations based on relationships they had with their mothers. You should have been called shy. This yeah, it's just like man like it's the same thing in a lot of ways. So what do we do about that? I don't know, Bray. <laughs> okay, I really, can't, I really think cats need to go to therapy. One, and I need they, 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 and I, I think people need therapy. People need really good leadership, and leadership that is active that's, and that's, present in their lives. That's what I was going to say. Second, discipleship. Because if it wasn't for discipleship, I wouldn't have married you. Period. No, it's true. I but love it, you, but, but I wouldn't have married you. Expound on that for the saints. Because I, the last time I broke up with you when we were dating. I was done. Like, so we broke up twice, just so y'all have context to what he's talking she about. Was, she was like, man, Jackie was, man, she, bro. That was terrible. She was terrible. That was. She was terrible. And like, the first time, <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all a story real quick. Wow. The, the first time. Story time. Uh, Jackie. You might as well uh, put on a red sweater. The first time I saw Jackie and, after we started dating. And tie we, up we started, shoes. We started. Um, With the train going we started, around We started a long distance relationship. And uh, I gave her a gift. And she ran from me. And she was like, oh, why are you giving me gifts? It's weird. And it she just awkward. ran for me. It was awkward. And I, I, I stopped her before she walked in the building. And I said, as, as much as you run for me, I'm still going to pursue you. Awkward. And she was like, oh, Too you made pressure. it more awkward. Too much pressure. I was pressure. like, you can run for me. You can run. And Whoa, so, bucko. And so, and so, <laughs> and so like, I, I, I literally pursued this woman for so long, so long. And uh i felt i i, I knew the lord told me that this, she was my wife it was just it was so like painfully obvious and so yeah one day like we was you know out of, out of town and and she just began to just act so mean to me to the point where like i began to break and i don't mean to like you know bring, bring up your past sins and i broke up with her <laughs> i'm glad they in the sea of forgiveness <laughs> and i broke and, I, and you I, done went fishing for him and, and I, brought him back to life i don't even think we broke up i just kind of no, like well, it it was a uh, yeah. We didn't break up. We didn't break up. You talked about this in your book, didn't you? Yeah, it was chapter five. We didn't break up, but it was clearly communicated that we're not together. Yeah. And can I can I say what I said, or is that too much? No, I won't say it. It's, yeah. No, you can say no, it. No, it's okay. Okay. But I I just yeah I just kind of felt like 
like this was over, you know, our relationship was over and um I didn't know I I, I didn't know where to go and I along with my disciple and my mentor and the Lord um you know encouraging me like no Jackie I I I, I can't be he's always said I can't be the Holy Spirit for you but I strongly believe based off of my prayers based off me watching your life closely that Jackie man is the best woman for you and so, and so like it it wasn't like he can like he talked me into it he just kind of was there to to confirm what I, what I felt like the Lord had already already told me. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, young men, when they don't have discipleship, they just have them and their own faults to to try to see if this person is, is, is the one for them. My God. And so they, they, they're in these communities and they don't have anybody in their life that are wiser than them, Ooh. that are praying for them. My God. But that are watching their lives. Even if you look in the scriptures, it's mm-hmm. like when, Take us there. when Timothy, when Paul was writing Timothy, he's mm-hmm. New Testament. Faith. <laughs> no, seriously, like when, like they was, they knew he was ready to be an elder because the they said the the elders had watched your life mm-hmm. and watched and uh, uh, to see your growth and mm-hmm. like a lot of men don't have that mm. and so like when they come to the Lord and if a man is young dude is handsome and he's saved everybody think he's just a candidate for like marriage it's like okay you gotta you got saved now next thing to do is get married and it's like but no who's pouring into this man mm. who's teaching him how to be a husband mm. who what what older man has invited him in in in, in his house and allow him to watch him love his wife it, did he ha, has he ever seen that in his life and only the like, cosby's and we know what happened with that and so i i, I just think that i just think that Will cosby is what they call him i think with discipleship man i think it's i think it would be very hard for a man who truly loves the lord to not marry a woman when he when he starts dating her if he loves her if he is in community and relationship with men who are encouraging him to pursue this young woman for marriage and it's all who and he's also seen that being modeled in his own life. I think it'd be hard. You know what I'm saying? And so for the man who's is staying in relationships for like five, six, seven years without marriage, bro, one, y'all wasting y'all time. Two, y- y'all need some discipleship. That's what I, I feel. I could be wrong, but that's just kinda the way I feel. This is a good game. <laughs> but you're doing a great job of watching this and communicating because you ain't looked at the screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not a nan time. Y'all are important. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Y'all are so important. But this is a good game. You was doing a great job. Look at Dark, it's just a monster. I think that's really valuable what you're saying is that so many of the, the, the behaviors of men nowadays, especially in, I guess, dating relationships, is indicative of their lack of maturity and their lack of discipleship and mentorship in their lives. And I think that's that's a really fair assessment, considering the fact that a large part of the black community has doesn't have fathers. Or we have dads, but we haven't had dads that have fathered us, um, mm-hmm. where we've been able to observe how they love and how they pursue women. And I imagine that if that was the case, we would actually see more marriages. Honestly, what you looking at? Somebody, I was uh, looking at uh, somebody comment about the game. So, what is a woman to do though? Is does she does she say does she give him an ultimatum and say if you don't marry me, I'm out? Does she just pray and give it to God and not be active in any way? Or does she just continue to hope that the Holy Spirit will come alive inside of him and make him? Or is his lack of marriage? This is four options. I, I apologize. Or is his a lot. it is not to choose from? Or is his lack a, of B, a, C, a, D. <laughs> Or is it there the potential that his lack of pursuit is actually the evidence that he's not the man for you? Um, because that could be a possibility too. Because I don't want no man that got to take sixty years to make a decision. Because that that's that's the kind of man you will be with or without a ring. Okay, what was the first one? My God, I don't remember. What is a woman to do? Basically, uh. Yeah, I, I I think it can be all of those, you know what I'm saying, potentially. I, I think a woman, w- women have to have to know that, and I don't, I don't mean this in a very cheesy way, and I'm not saying it because it's Valentine's Day. You, you, you're special. You're valuable, right? Um, God has called you to, 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 to if, if, if God is calling you um, to marry somebody, don't waste your time on somebody who just doesn't want to marry you. Mm-hmm. I, I just think that it's a, yeah, don't don't waste your time. But be be prayerful, you know what I'm saying? Like, encourage that man to 
talk to older men and you talk to older women like i really think that we have to trust the design of the church mm. and to look look to people who have been there done it for wisdom and guidance because i think that some some men i, I think i think yeah i think it's it i think it's nuanced because i think some men actually are, it's the man that, might, that god might have for you but he just needs help like, but that means you need you need to get about his way. Yeah, and because so, I, wait, that's that's what I'm gonna say. Let man. me put a bullet point right here before I forget it. I was gonna, I think I'm gonna say what you was gonna say. I don't think you were. Go go go. So I, I I I do think that a part of the conversation is that sometimes the best thing you can do for a man is to leave him to get out his way that's what because I'm you're say. a distraction to his that's maturity. What I was because say, as, long bucko. As, as long as you're still there, he don't realize the problem. He can't see it. Yeah, you got you have to leave and communicate while you're leaving and hope that the Holy Spirit will use it to convict him. About about his own problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I, I, I was gonna say that in 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 relation to, like, his, his lack of commitment to you or lack of willing willing to to want to marry you now is a reflection of what kind of leader he'll be in marriage. Whee! And so, keep going, <laughs> keep and, going. And, and so, my God, like one. If a man is unwilling to marry you, but but at the same time willing to keep you around it long, it's like man, you if you love him, like that's one thing. But you can love him from a distance. You mm. don't want to enter into any marriage. I feel like with a man who will allow you to you know be strung along that that long, or that without, you had to convince. Or yeah. I'm not gonna convince you to marry me, sir. Yes. Yeah, no. And Mm-mm. so because I'm gonna have to keep convincing you to love me and I'm not for to do that. But but what I will say also too, don't boo boo on that man. What do you mean? Because a lot of men are good men. They just don't know how to act like actively show. Oh, look that at you good being man. gracious. It's true. You being so gracious. But that's no, good. That's why we need that balance. No, seriously, because you can't just I don't say have an ounce. you can't just say a man is trash because he's not willing willing to commit. I think that's one of the things. Are you sure? Yeah, because okay. Cause what if every every he, he every, can, every every situation? Might, I'm a man. I, I'm you a man? I'm, he you might man. not I'm be ontologically trash, ontologically. but he's trash right now. Why did you have to say ontologically? Because I had to pull the seminary word out. Like I, he's trash right now in this moment. His identity is not what trash. he's doing. He's trash. an image yeah, bearer. But he's that's an what I mean. The living but that's, God. But that's what I mean. What he's doing? What he's what he's what he's doing? What he's doing is trash. But that doesn't mean. That that doesn't mean he's trash, and so if he's not trash, you shouldn't throw him away. You should remove yourself out of the situation and allow him to grow. You know what I'm saying? Before you throw him away, because I think a lot of times men in the church, Go ahead, talk, Bert. it was coming, Get but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't come. It went back <laughs> <laughs> in the church. Like I, I think the the a lot of churches. They just kind of set men up for failure when it comes to marriage. Hmm. And it's not his fault. And what I mean is, I said this, I said this, I, I made an IG live about it one time. We, the the banner <laughs> of a man's maturity is marriage. And that should not be the case. Hmm. The banner of a man's maturity in, in the church should not be marriage. And so a lot of times men are trying to figure out how to be husbands before they know how to be disciples. They don't know how to be disciples yet. How are you gonna be? A, how are you gonna be a husband? You nobody even taught you how. Nobody never taught you how to be a disciple. And so I didn't feel comfortable with being a husband until I knew how to be a holistic disciple of Christ. I, I learned how to love you well because I learned how to love people in my local community well. And so, like, so I think a lot of times these men they 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 feel this un, unhealthy pressure. And some people fall into that pressure and get married to a woman that they don't even like. Or get married to a woman that they don't even love like that. Or get, you know what I'm saying? But some people, they they do the opposite. They run or whatever. And I, I feel like if you instill confidence in men, in, local, in, in your local community, I, I think that you'll start seeing a lot of men propose way faster than they do now. But how do you do that when men don't go to church? Well, statistically. If they, well, if they don't go to church. Cause I, I thought we talking about Christians. If they don't go to church. No, Christ, Christian men. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. I, 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 yeah, 
if I'm, it, I'm not, not not all of I'm not I'm not I'm I'm more so speaking to t- statistics that the church is predominantly usually filled up with more women than men. If they and ain't the there, why that, you worried about them anyways? What you you know they out of sight, out of mind. I guess I'm just wondering what but, what do, what do we do practically? Like I, I guess the, it's really on men to fix this problem. Because a woman can't. All we can do is pray. But I think it's on men to yeah. create communities of other men where there's healthy conversation and healthy challenge and healthy accountability. Yeah. Because I, I don't know what else there I could agree. be. I agree. I, I, I think we need more older men and wiser men. It doesn't even have to be older men. Just wiser men. Like if you are a 34-year-old man and you see somebody 24 in your church and you're spiritually way more mature than him don't just like 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 take him under your wing disciple him you know and discipleship doesn't have to look like meeting at starbucks every week and reading psalms like no invite him into your church i mean invite him into your home i mean allow allow him to see you know uh yeah like you loving your wife i think that instills confidence in men allow them to see man not only do i feel comfortable that i can do this now i could be a husband but I also feel inspired to be a husband. Mm. And so I think a lot of men of God, if they're true men of God, I'm not talking about men who just in the church claiming to be a Christian, but like low-key living trash lives. I'm talking about men who have the Holy Spirit, but have no guidance. I'm talking about those men. When they start seeing good examples of, of leadership, of marriage, I think we'll start seeing a lot of, you know, more men pr- proposing to their wives. And then the ones who don't do it, now we can start weeding out the trash ones. It's like, okay, yeah, you see everything. You you got good examples. You got <laughs> everything. You just trash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're just rebellious. You just, yeah. So that's all I got to say. This game is really good. I don't even have any more questions. If y'all got questions, I, I if I find them, I might, I'll ask Preston because I don't, I don't got none. Uh... But that was that was very wise advice. Thank you, babe. I'm really. I'm, I do what I can do when I can do it. I know. I'm. I'm always so thankful that I've married a wise person. Oh. No, truly, I told President this the other day. Whew. I said, and this is gonna sound arrogant, and I'm not being arrogant. I promise, I'm not. But every time somebody said that, they be arrogant. I'm not being arrogant. <laughs> but I, I was telling, I was telling President how like when we co-teach or like we do lives like this. I'm always really encouraged that I know I could throw it to him and he's going to do his thing because from I'm a communicator and a Bible teacher who I do think God can kind of give some like cool advice through. And so it would just suck if I was like married to somebody who I had to carry uh, spiritually <laughs> in that way. Like that would that would really bother me. Can I speak on that real quick? But I don't feel it that way. Go ahead. Can I speak on that real quick? I, I agree. And I, it's vice versa, you know what I'm saying? But I, I agree, and I think it'll be trash if I um, if I talk like I was in the second grade. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like, man, like who is Jackie? We married wouldn't be to? married, like, because I would disrespect you all the time. But I also, and I would really need Grace not to, because I'd be like, oh, you stupid. But I also want to see. Golly, I also. <laughs> I just can't imagine marrying a stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I also want to say this because what you said a couple minutes ago about men not being in the church as much as women and a lot of times women can develop or become more knowledgeable about scripture and a lot of times men come into church and they get married to to women and a lot so it, it, I, and i think that can really do th- like a lot to a man's confidence and i want to like let women out there know like that doesn't mean that that man isn't equipped to lead you and that doesn't mean like you're not equipped to lead. Like knowledge is not the evidence of someone's spiritual maturity. Loving God Interesting. and loving people is the evidence of someone's maturity. And so a a woman can can know way more scripture than you, but if you know how to love her like Christ loved the church, hmm. you are fit to lead her. And so uh and, and And I would say I think you have to discern between does he not know more because he does not spend time in the scriptures and does not have the discipline or he, to pursue God's word, or does he not know more simply because he might work a certain job and so he doesn't have as much margin as you do or, to read the Bible? Or he just hasn't been in Christ longer than you. 
or he or he learns slower than you or whatever. Like we're, we're blessed to be in a man. We both love theology and we both love learning. We both love the scriptures. But everybody is not like that. Sometimes you meet a, a married couple. The woman, she knows more. And then, you know, sometimes you meet a, a married couple. You know what I'm saying? But like that, that that isn't like evidence that like you are more spiritually mature than your husband or a yeah. man isn't equipped to, 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 to lead you in a marriage. It's like, no, nah, like if he has the Holy Spirit and if he loves God and he loves you, like let that man grow into the man that God has called him to be. You well, this is, a, this is a good question. Where is the line between encouraging your boyfriend in his faith and leading him in his faith? Woo! <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I, I think I think I sound like Rafiki. Yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a, that's a good question. I think that I, I think it. I, I think it depends on what what you're leading him to, right? Because are you Ooh, I need a are you low stick, key uh... are you low key trying to lead him, or are you low key leading him to things to help him be, become a better leader? It's a difference. I don't get that. What I what I mean is it's like, like. You have done things. You you have done things in our marriage, right? That I that I'm grateful for. <clears throat> instead of trying to lead me, like instead of trying to like wear like like wear my hat as the husband, as the priest of our home, you suggest things that 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 you see that you observe that would help me lead us better. Right. Right. That's what I mean. And so you making suggestions like man, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that or maybe you should talk to this man because he's good in this area. Well, right? I, 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 and so I, I think I, that's a difference. But I think there's a way that a woman can say that in a way that uh, still feels like leadership because it's it comes across as authoritative. But also there's a way in which a woman can communicate that where it sounds manipulative. Um, and so I I think the way you offer suggestions matters but also i think the humility of the man is really important in this because mm -hmm. if you're not willing to receive that's, that's true then what's the point yeah if, if every suggestion is met with pushback then you know you don't actually want me to be a helper at all you just want me to be quiet Woo, that's good but go ahead that's oh, good. that was it no no i i i i think that's good i think i think the the thing you just said about humility is really good because when we first got married, I hated I hated when you gave me suggestions. Like, well, I, I got this. You Aww. know what I'm saying? Like, I know how to do this. When the truth was, I didn't. Mm. You know? Like, the thing is, marriage is one of those things you know when you're not ready, but you can really never truly be ready. No. Right? Yeah. You Like, and what I mean is, you, like, some people know they shouldn't get married. you just too immature. But it's something that you really can never truly prepare for. What what helps you become a better husband is getting married and failing and learning, right? And 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 growing. And so, no man is going to get married. No woman is going to be get married and be the perfect husband, perfect wife. You have to grow into these things. And so, what I mean is, you're not going to go into a marriage completely just perfect, right? And so, men have to be humble. Mm -hmm. You have to just take some. You know what I mean? Because every good leader has to know how to take criticism. That's good. And every good leader has to ha has to listen to the the people that they're that they're that they're leading. Which is why like, it should, you ain't going you ain't going to succeed as a leader if to, you don't listen. To me it is it it should always be a warning sign when a man is pursuing you that is not submitted under some kind of leadership. Um because good leaders submit. And so I every yeah. good leader Follow, follow somebody. Yeah, because because to me, I would just ask questions. That doesn't mean I'm gonna cut you off. That doesn't mean that you might not be my husband. That it, but it does mean that I have now questions about how you understand authority and submission. Um, and and so, like, if you want to be the authority over your life and you don't have any spiritual headship, how can I trust that even as you lead me, that you're getting wise counsel, um, that you have somebody over you? Giving you wisdom and how to, you know, do what you're doing. And also, so. too, the people... <clears throat> Look at you. Got the, all these words on your heart now. The people that you're leading will teach you how to lead them. What I mean is, I'm not saying that they have to l lead you. But in, 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 in a way, like, I think that for you to only listen to the Lord when it comes to your family and your wife or whatever and not listen to them, not listen to your wife, even your children, like... 
they have a voice. They 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 matter. And so like like I have to be humble and 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 you know consider their suggestions or their feelings or their thoughts or whatever to become a good leader. Like I have to take all of that into consideration. You know what I'm saying? And I think that sometimes men we just and I was guilty of it too. Just wanted it to be like, no, I got this, and you know, and, I, and and not like listening to people, but not really like hearing hearing what they had to say. And I was falling on my face every single time. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, no, nah, like I think that, yeah, we just have to be more humble. I think that's what I'm trying. To Somebody say. asked the question of what what do you do, or I might be misinterpreting. It's either what do you do when a man goes ghost, or why do men go ghosts? Woo. So let's do the latter. Why, why do men ghost women? Some of y'all women be ghosting men too. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of homeboys that got ghost uh, last year. They was like, yo, she ghosted me. And I was like, that's crazy. So you don't know the answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think it's a I'm reason. sure there's a lot of reasons. Your breath probably sunk. Or, you know, they just probably feel like that you wasn't... The, they the, the probably just them. didn't like you. They probably just didn't like you. But I, I also think it can be cowardice. Like, yeah, it is they immature. Just they just don't want to tell you, you know, of why they why they ghosted you. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. For some women, y'all probably didn't gave them too much. And they I saw they got, they got what they really wanted from y'all. And they was like, okay, on to the next one. Because you have a lot of trash men out there. And so... Don't be giving somebody stuff that you can that they only should get in marriage because if they can get it now, it's no need to stick around. Ghost. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you're special. You, 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 you're worth way more than just giving somebody. I'm not even saying sex. That was that, that's included, but just time, energy, like. Yeah, like whatever he wants from you, if he feel like he got it from you, if wow. you're dealing with a trash person, he probably got what he wanted, and he wanted, you know, a lot of these dudes in the church, they but just really want to take their ego. Even though ghosting feels uh, it could hurt and feel unfair, a lot of times it's a blessing. It's it's a blessing that he left before your emotions got involved. And so look, praise the Lord. And even if your emotions did get involved and you, he ghosted you and you feel some type of way, you said, you ain't want him anyways. You better be lucky he ain't ghost you when you had three kids, Bob. Aww. That'd be bad. That's sad. Man, <laughs> praise the Lord that he ghosts you now. Oh, my God. Because he ghosted somebody else. Preston, you, you're getting a lot of scenarios and it's hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know. It just it made me feel bad. <laughs> Just say it. Okay. Let me a- answer uh, two more questions because my phone is dying. Uh, I just think it's funny that it's 1,900 people on here on Valentine's Day. For real? It, yeah. They're not all single. We're not single. But yeah. It's a panorama. A what, panorama? What are we finna do? <laughs> you sound like Mr. Brown. What are we finna do? <laughs> the making up words. During this pan- it's a panorama. This panorama. <laughs> um... You you really saying all this watch, watching the game? That's the funny thing. Cause, all right, ain't nobody got no questions, so I'm gonna take me and my moisturized face. Uh, oh, I did want to ask this. You smell so good. Thank you. How did you know? She be smelling good when she got the shower. How did you know I was your wife? How did you distinguish between me and all the other women? That you had access women. to, because this is the thing. When I when I met Preston, <laughs> he was this little popular poet in Chicago. That all these women lies. That's wa- not a lie. <laughs> all of these women wanted. So he had a lot of options, which is another issue of our day. Is that a lot of these men have too many options and they don't know how to choose. But anywho, how with all of the options that you had, when I came along. How did you know that I was your wife and not all the others? I mean, well, when you came along, uh, we was friends for three years. I mean, everybody know this story, but like, well, most people know this story. We was friends for three years. And so I didn't know you was my wife. I mean, you were like, <clears throat> the, you and Ito were like the girls that I love to be around the most. Because I just, I loved y'all as friends. And so, I don't know, like... 
I began to pray. The, the story the story goes, I was in a relationship. Well, I was in a situation with, with, a, with a female. And um, I didn't have no discipleship. I didn't have no leadership in my life to tell me, this isn't ain't a good look for you. And so I, the way I was judging a wife <laughs> or judging who I should be married um, to was like all like superficial things. Like, man, she baked. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe that's a that's a good sign. Like, I didn't know or whatever. And it wasn't until a man... <laughs> oh. It wasn't until a man came in my life and discipled me or whatever. And um, it, that 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 six-month period of time that I, I kind of broke it off with her and I began to pray. And I prayed for all the things that I wanted in a wife. And I truly prayed about it. And when I prayed about it, the only thing that I could think about was you. Hmm. The only thing that I could think about with you was you. And so it was crazy because I was just talking about this the other day uh, to my friend Ito because she was here. Uh, and I remember driving on, on the highway and feeling like the Lord was telling me you were my wife. And I was like, yo, I think I think Jackie's my wife. Because when I, when I broke it off with this girl and I began to pray about what I wanted in a wife, I prayed for somebody who was creative. I pray somebody for somebody who loved theology. I pray for somebody who had natural hair because I love natural hair. I pray somebody. I pray for somebody who can cook. I didn't even know you cooked back then, but then God answered that prayer. I pray for somebody who will support my ministry. I pray somebody who like I pr- all the things that I prayed for. You were it. Mm-hmm. I pray somebody that I was friends with. I mm-hmm. pray for a friend, mm-hmm. and I couldn't become friends with girls because it was weird. It was like, and so like God just kind of set me up and I was like, yo, is this a girl that I've been friends with for three years? The one I'm supposed to marry? This is crazy. And I was like, man, and I was on the highway and I was praying <laughs> and I was like, man, if she is my wife, how am I going to get Jackie to like me? <laughs> like, that's, that's all I kept thinking about. Like, how am I going to get Jackie to like me? Because she does not like me. All right. She talks about, <laughs> she talks about. Yeah, she used to make like jokes about me. I thought she thought I was ugly, and so like we had that type of friendship. She used to always joke. You used to always joke. Jackie said I look like PJ, uh, the the um, the crackhead from PJs. <laughs> the, the structure of your face is just, yes. no. I'll it's tell not, you, y'all not like twins. It's like the structure of your face listen is to very. Me, listen to me. It's, it's a lot like we them. went to a Phil Wickham concert, and we were sitting on the car outside the Phil Wickham concert. <laughs> It was a June. I would never forget it. We was friends, and you she tell was the like, story all, "Like this is really in your heart." And she was you, like, "You tell the story a lot." Because this is a year before I pursued you, and she was like, "You kind of look like that crackhead from the DJs." <laughs> and I said, "What? What? <laughs> I really didn't mean anything by it." <laughs> and I said, and so, so a year later, <coughs> I'm driving on the highway, y'all, and I'm like, "Yo, I think Jackie was my wife." Because one thing I realized is that I loved you. Not in some like mushy romantic type of way. Yeah, you care for me. Deeply. I just, I just loved you. Like everything about you, I loved you. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> and the first thing I thought about when I was driving and about how I'm gonna get you to like me is what you yeah. said to me a year ago. You got a charger? Uh, is that? Um, yeah. Is that I look like um the dude from PJ? <laughs> and I said, yo, not only do I don't think she liked me. But she thinks I look like the dude from the PJs. And so mm. how is this going to happen? And so when I called her, finally prayed about it, called her and told her, I feel like God is calling me to pursue her. She was like, yo, I've been liking you for a year. I was like, a year ago, you called me the <laughs> dude from the PJs. Because I wasn't saying that you were ugly. I just said that y'all favor. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, how was I supposed to know that? Though? No, no, I understand. <laughs> so the saints are asking me, so basically, to answer my question, you know I was your wife because when you prayed to God, I came to mind and I, I guess, embodied all the things that you asked God for. Because God in his sovereignty, though, he didn't allow me to like realize that you was my wife until I became more spiritually minded. Hmm. That's really good. Because, and I thank God for that, because before I wasn't. I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to look for in a wife. And so when I began to like get disciple and, sh- and, and I begin to see like, no, like I'm not just calling you to be in a marriage for like butterflies and roses. Cause it's not always going to be that, but for the glory of God mm-hmm. and how can this, and, 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 and how I want to look for a wife that that's going to help me 
fulfill the the purpose <clears throat> that God has for me, it was just so plain, like painfully obvious. That's good. That you were my wife. It was like it 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 was so clear. It scared me. And that's what I be saying is it that was like, okay, dudes, this is scary. dudes, when they ask God, if they ask God, He'll tell you. He'll make it plain. Cause I sought the Lord to the point where, like, I, I you I, fasted. Yeah, I fasted, and I and I broke up with. The, I, I separated from this girl, who I really thought I was going to propose to, and I said, "You, you know what? I'm going to separate from you for a couple of weeks, and I want to just hear from the Lord." Uh, and I never got back with her on some like we we need to get married type stuff. Like yeah. in that time frame, God was like. No, she's not the one I have for you. The one I have for you is <clears throat> the one you've been friends with for three years. So people don't know my 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 part. Um, feel so. So y'all know our anniversary is what two weeks. Two so weeks. this is funny. we don't be caring about Valentine's Day. Times. I said times. You definitely say times. I said times. That was an M. Valentine's Day times. <laughs> because it's too expensive. If, if you got an anniversary, just put all your coin into that. Um, anyway. Uh, what was happening? So like the, uh, again, friends with the years. And then at some point I started to, I feel like I've told the story a thousand times, but I started to develop this, uh, affection for Preston. Affection. And I like the word. It's cause it's, it's accurate. I, I <laughs> developed this affection and I thought I was bored, you know, because you know, when you get saved, bored. yeah, because you know, when you get saved and you stop talking, like, cause when you're in the world, you just talk to random people all the time just to do something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got your number. I'm talking to you. Oh, I got your number. I'm talking to you. And so, you know, when you when you leave the world, you leave all that too. And so I was just like, maybe I'm just I'm not I'm not used to not being able to text somebody when I'm bored. All those things. And so I talked to my disciple and I was like, man, um, I I don't know if I like Preston. I think I like Preston because you know I, I was a, a gay girl, so I don't I don't know what this is to 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 be liking a whole man. And so I was like, I don't know if this is the enemy trying to keep me from a purpose. I don't know what this is. And she told me to pray about it. So for a year, I prayed about it. I just kept getting giving it over to uh, God. Um, and there was also this just people used to always tell me in Preston that we were going to be together, but we thought it was corny because it's like, y'all just saying that because we get along, right? Like, because we, we, we like to talk about people because we're funny. We both do poetry. Uh, we both have really serious faces. We don't smile. <laughs> like, remember they used to get on our nerves. Like, y'all just All saying, the time. Y'all just saying we're going to get married just because we, and like, because we, used to laugh at cause we like. cool. And it's like, why can't, like, girl and boys just be cool or whatever? And so, and I, but I, didn't you hate when we did get married? And everybody was like, "I was right." It was like I feel like a lot of people wasn't right. It was just we, y'all wasn't right. We had chemistry. We had chemistry, but, but it was platonic. Anywho, um, so from there, I did notice things about Preston, which is every time I would come to Chicago, he would give me a lot of attention. But I didn't like, like you that like that. But I could tell that you valued me above everybody else. <laughs> Because even something as small as we would go out to eat, women, and you would sit next to me every time, like to the point that the girl you was talking to, you didn't even sit next to her. You sat next to me. She got so mad. I noticed it. And I was like, I'm not trying to mess up y'all thing. But like, here's I the just, thing, though. I'm not. I'm here's not. The, here's the thing. I'm though. his friend. Here's, I'm sorry. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> here's the thing, though. When I tell you, I'm not trying to. Mess when I tell you before, I, before we were romantically involved, when I tell you this girl got me. Like our hum, our sense of humors, like humors, our sense of humor, <laughs> like creatively, like everything. She got me, and it, so it was like, like I when you came around, I didn't even realize. Like when when, when God showed me you was my wife, I was like, yo, like that makes sense. It's everything is so easy with you. Mm. Like everything was so easy. Like my my personality, the way I thought, like my humor, like everything was so easy. And so that's the reason why I gravitated you towards you so much because you just got me. Like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm but just I, saying. I wasn't crushing on you because a lot of people. I'm gonna say that a lot of people thought I was crushing on you back then, but I, I truly wasn't. Right. So I noticed that he was giving me a particular attention. And so <laughs> I went to Ito and I asked Ito about you and all that. So long story short, um, I started to pray and it was really, 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 really strange because I all of a sudden started to feel this like sense in my heart that I was ready for a relationship. I can't even explain it. It was it was weird. Um, About more Wendy's? 
Yeah, I was, I was, I used to work at Wendy's and I was over there cutting lettuce and I got this feeling in my heart that I'm ready for. It wasn't like something I concocted in my brain. Like I'm ready for a relationship. It was just this, like you're ready for a relationship ship type thing. And so I was listening to my iPad, iPod and y'all, y'all people that don't believe in uh, the Lord speaking and using all types of things to speak. Y'all probably gonna think I'm tripping, but as soon as that thought came to my mind, and I thought Ari. it was, be quiet. You telling the story too fast. As soon as that thought came to my mind. India Irie's song, I'm Ready to Love, came on in my shuffle. And I said, this <laughs> is so strange. Are you ready for love? <laughs> I don't know the what Lord she said. Summer's a scene. And I was like, okay. Song. And so I went, to, <laughs> went home. <laughs> I prayed. I was like, I don't know what this is. And so I prayed about Preston. Woo! And I said, Lord... I really don't know if it's your will for me and Preston to be together, but if it's your will, put it on his heart to uh, pursue me. Um, and so two weeks later, I'm not knowing that when I'm praying this is when he's fasting, praying about me. So mm -hmm. we're low key, both seeking God on separate ends without knowing. I was scared low key. Um, and so then he ends up calling me, telling me that he wanted to pursue me. And what, what, what I guess confirmed it that I knew he was my husband was one, just all of the, the weird connectedness about our situation. It just seemed like totally a God thing. But it also was, I started to think through Preston, what he valued and what his goals were. And I saw myself being able to support it. And I really do think that's important as a woman is, man, where you're going, does it align with where I want to go? Does it align with where I think I can help and serve you? You're talking and, good. And so, like, I just, I just knew he liked evangelism. I knew he liked missions. I knew he loved the scriptures. I knew uh, he honored the local church. I Art. knew he cared about the gospel. And these are all things that I loved too. Art and so too. it felt art like, yeah, art and creativity. So I was, I felt like if I come alongside you, we'll actually be better together than we are apart. And I. To me, that confirmed everything that I needed to know. So yeah, that's how that's how it happened. Yeah, man. Three years later. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and a weak bladder and pelvic floor. <laughs>